Hey guys, just thought I'd do a quick video. I want to see how uh, long these solar panels can power my, my two fridges. But I have six panels. Three of them are in series, and then the other three are in series. In the afternoon, we should have like four hours of sunlight, but we have storms coming in. Three days worth of storms, four days. I want to see if it'll keep up. This big freezer, really big. So that extension cord goes over here orange one plugs into that my solar panels are with the green extension cord and inside my house we have this big fridge we got five kids in this house so it's gonna get used a lot opened and closed a lot so I have it plugged in right here hooking into the charge strip and then the charge strip both these go down here Extension cords come down from here. This is the one that's powering the two fridges. Plugs into here. And then this is my GrowWatt inverter charge controller. So here's my solar panels right here going in. And I have a lithium iron, iron phosphate battery, 48 volt battery, uh, 5.12 kilowatts, watt hours. And this is a GrowWatt 3000 watt all-in-one inverter. We'll see how long it lasts. I'm curious to see if this, when the storm and the clouds come over, if it's going to last that long. Yeah, my Victron Smart Shunt said is I have pretty much one day left of energy. The battery's at 80% right now. And if I don't have any solar coming in, I will be pretty much done for in one day. But we'll See how much the solar panels top the battery off when there's clouds. Okay, so the battery is officially dead. It's been two and a half days. I have a monitor, battery monitor um, hooked to my battery. Uh, it's called a smart shunt, and it just records all the data going in and out of the battery. So I'll show you some of the graphs I have. So first I'll show you the graph of the solar power going into the battery. And then I'll show you the state of charge of the battery. Okay, here's the smart shunt, Victron smart shunt. That's what I'm using to record all this data. So I started the experiment on, uh, you can see February 18th at 8 p.m., 1800 hours, so 8 p.m. I plugged my uh, batteries at 80% charge and then the fridges were running and it was pulling about a negative 183 watts from my battery. See here, it's about midnight, negative 200 watts. This is February, so here's the morning, the next day. And I thought I was going to have a storm this next day, except uh, we had a lot of sun, surprisingly. So, right about 9.30, I got, I had a positive 250 watts, and I have a big pine tree over by this tree, so, over by my solar panels, so it went down, and really at noon, that's when I started getting more power, and so I had positive energy all through the day on the 19th, 3 p.m. I still had positive energy all the way up to, uh, let's see, what is that, 5.30? 5.30, um, that's when the power, the watts, the power uh, started going to the negative. So I didn't, so the sun went down, 5.30, now I'm back in the negative. So um, actually at this time, uh, my battery's right back up. Here, my battery got down to like 40%. And then right here, it right when the sun was down for the day, it had charged all the way up to 90%. So I don't think I need that many. If the sun was out, I could pretty much run indefinitely. Run forever, pretty much. If the sun was out every day on half of those panels. Because see, I'm only at the peak time, I'm getting 720 watts. So I probably only need half those panels if it was super sunny out every day. But uh, this was actually kind of a 
there were a few clouds in the sky, but it was pretty sunny that day. So here the sun goes down, February 19th. Then all through the night, here's midnight. I'm at a negative. And then, okay, and then here's where the storm came in. And this was a pretty dark storm. There was a, a lot of dark clouds in the sky. Here, 9 o'clock in the morning. This is President's Day, and so um, kids are out of school, and they're, we're using the fridge a lot. Here's noon. Here's where the sun came out on the day before. But we got up only up to 52 watts positive. And we were in the negative the entire day, pretty much. Here's 4 p.m., 5.30, negative so we were never in the positive on the cloudy day, which is too bad. And then, let's see though, so this is midnight. This is a uh, 2 a.m. the next day. And then 6 a.m. And then 8 a.m. the battery died. So I'll just go back. So that's showing how much power is going in and out. I'll just show you the state of charge of the battery. Here's here's the, the watts going in and out, but I'll just show you the state of charge. So here we start off at 84%, and this is in the evening, 8 o'clock at night, and it's running the appliances all night long. And then at 8... Uh, let's see, what is this? Seven in the morning, the battery's at 39%. And then the sun comes out, starting to charge. Oh yeah, so it charges the battery all through the day. Got up to 93%, 92%. So at 6 p.m., the sun's down, and the uh, state of charge is starting to go down. So February 19th, 6 p.m., losing power. And then we just continue to lose power. Here's President's Day. President's Day. And then into the evening, let's see, there's midnight. And then here's, uh, so that was Monday, President's Day, and then here's Tuesday. And then Tuesday at 8 a.m., we died. That's when the power, power died. So here's the thing. I learned a, a few things from this test. Uh, well, I really don't want to buy a gas generator for these types of scenarios. I'm really trying to avoid that. Uh, so that's one option to keep my battery charged as a gas generator. But uh, there's another option. So from what I've been reading, uh, solar panels can produce 10 to 25% uh, when, when you have cloud cover. So I'm just going to assume, like, worst case scenario, 10% when the, when the clouds are out. So solar panels are actually super cheap, especially those ones. Uh, they're used solar panels. You can get uh, those solar panels for, like, $59. And um, mine have actually have cracks in the back, so I got mine sell for, uh, they sold for $34 when they're in stock. But $59, that's pretty cheap. So because solar panels are so cheap, I should be able to just pick up 12 more panels, so I have 18 panels total. So I can keep these solar panels in my sh in my garage. If there's an emergency, the power goes out, and um, there's a storm, I can pull out these 12 panels, set them up on my fence where it's nice and open, and then that will give me a total of four point around 4.5 kilowatts total with 18 panels. If it's cloud cover, I'm getting 10%. I should, on a cloudy day, be able to get 450 watts out of those panels on a cloudy day out of those 18 panels, 450 watts. And so that should be able to run my uh, fridges indefinitely. So that is the next thing I need to try. But as far as a haunt, like getting a gas generator, uh, uh, David Pose, I think that's his name, he did a test where he put a gallon of gas in one of those 2000 watt Honda generators and then he charged his battery. So out of one gallon of gas, pretty much able to charge the battery that I have. Um, yeah, I don't want to buy a generator, but I heard they also have uh, 48 volts alternators that you can hook onto your uh, cars, and they can produce like 5,000 watts of power. So that's kind of interesting. I've got a, a diesel truck, 
and that thing can idle pretty long and I wonder I don't know that's just something to think about 48 volt alternator that gets 500 that outputs 5,000 watts could charge that battery in an hour um, but so I don't know what do you think thanks for watching hopefully this video didn't go too long but see ya